Let's start with one that we are going to use right away here. And remember, you don't need to write exactly everything that's on here. It's perfectly fine to abbreviate, and as long as you can understand what it is, that's fine. Okay? So an armature. An armature is kind of like the skeleton of a sculpture. Okay? Uh, it's the framework, and often it's made out of materials that are very solid, like steel or wood or other things that you can uh, build that would be solid because it's got to hold up the sculpture. So you can see in this example here, um, the artist has taken a wire frame, then that's the armature, and then they're building the mass around that with some kind of clay material. Okay, so the armature is the framework or the skeleton um, that forms the structure of um, the artwork. An additive sculpture is a sculpture that you, to create it, you take materials and add them together. You add it. And we did that in some of our clay projects where we might have had uh, like our mug and then we uh, built it up by adding clay to it. Um, so you can have an additive sculpture that is like a clay you know, sculpture, or it could be a lot of different things. It could be um, wood, or it could be other materials, found objects, um, that type of thing, that you can add them together to create a sculpture. So an additive technique means that you add materials to create the sculpture. And remember, you don't have to write this whole thing down. Assemblage. Well, this year we are going to do an assemblage. And basically it is an additive sculpture that uses what we call found objects to, to create the artwork, to you assemble them to create the artwork. And so you have a good example here of everyday objects here that are put together to um, create this sculpture. Um, a base um, is a way that we can hold a sculpture up, that we can support a sculpture. Now, some sculptures can't stand on their own, and they need something to hold them up. So in a lot of cases, artists will use a base, and that's just the bottom support that holds up the sculpture. Okay? Remember that this is not a pedestal. A pedestal is different. Um, it, Wait, how is it different? Well, a, a pedestal is something that holds it up. I mean, that you put some a sculpture on or something on. You know what I mean? It does. It's not really part of the sculpture. You know what I mean? Um, the sculpture is fixed. It's attached to the base where it would not be attached to a pedestal. So you could put it on a pedestal, but the base would be on it, and then it would sit on the pedestal. Um, casting. We talked about casting a little bit in ceramics. And um, basically, casting is where you would pour slip into a plaster mold, and then when the slip dries some, you take apart the mold and you have um, this solid object. But um, you don't have to use slip. You can use all kinds of materials to do casting. This example here is they're you making... You use wax? You could use wax. And this here, this example here, they're using um, like a, a plastic rubbery substance to create the mold and then they could pour plaster in there, or they could pour other materials in there, melt them and pour them in there to do the casting. Okay, so that you can create like an exact copy of um, whatever. Carving. Well, we all know what carving is, right? 
we use a sharp tool tool to remove material. That's what it is. And you can carve lots of different materials. I mean, we carved clay and ceramics, but you could carve stone, you could carve wood. There's lots of things, plaster you could carve, wax you could carve, um, many, many different things that you can carve. Um, so it's not just, you know, what's ivory? Ivory is bone, like tusks, you know, from elephants. That's ivory. Yeah. Um, a closed sculpture. A closed sculpture doesn't mean that there's a door or it's shut up or anything like that. What it means is it is very solid. It is very massive. There's like no negative spaces or very few or very small negative spaces. Um, and it looks like a big, massive, heavy, solid piece of material. Okay. Um, this one here is a good example of that. There's not many voids. There's no real holes in it. Everything is very big and bulky. Um, it, it is like a person sad. Yeah, it does. It does. So this is a closed sculpture. Okay, composition. Composition in art, we talk about composition in a lot of different forms of art, not just sculpture, but in painting and in drawing and other mediums, uh, composition is important. It's also important when you're doing like um, graphic arts, we always talk about composition. And when I talk about composition, I'm talking about how the various elements of the artwork work together and how the space around them works with the composition. And a lot of times when I'm doing like a magazine layout or uh, a t-shirt design or something like that, composition is really important because I have lots of different elements that go into that. You know, I might have a headline or a subhead or text and pictures or illustrations, and I have to put them all together so that um, I'm using the space in such a way that the artwork is unified. It looks like it works together. Um, and that's what composition is. It's kind of like how all those different elements kind of fit together. And um, most of the time I think of it when I'm doing, you know, my graphic designs. But it also applies to other things like sculptures. Well, remember we talked about um, the base holding the sculpture up. Well, this is kind of the opposite. This is a sculpture that doesn't need a base to hold it up. It is called freestanding. It could stand by itself. It doesn't need any support because it's designed to stand by itself. I generally like my sculptures to be freestanding, but occasionally you make a sculpture and it, it won't stand by itself and you have to use a base. Um, but I like a freestanding sculpture that doesn't need a base. It doesn't need any support. I think it just looks more interesting. When we're talking about frontal, we're talking about a sculpture that is generally just viewed from the front. Okay? Because some sculptures, let's say a statue, you could walk all the way around the statue and view it from all sides because it's meant to be viewed from all sides. So you can look at it all the way around it. This one here, you just really view from the front. You don't look at the back of it. Okay? So in ceramics, we talked about relief sculptures, and those are the flat sculptures that are raised on a flat base. Those are also frontal. They're meant to be viewed from the front and not from all sides. We've talked about relief before in ceramics, so this is nothing new. Um, and this is also a frontal sculpture, um, but it is a high relief. It means it's a relief sculpture, but it is protruding from the back further than most 
relief sculpture. So it's kind of a, a strong, high sculpture, but it still has a back. It's not viewed, um, you know, from a different place, okay? Okay, um, whole or void. Did you notice that in that closed sculpture, there were really no holes or voids? And basically that means like an empty space. I've often said that when you create a sculpture in any kind of layout, I believe, the space that is not occupied, the holes or the voids, is just as important as the actual object. So what you don't put in the sculpture is just as important as what you do put in the sculpture. So um, a hole or void could be an actual hole or it could be a big indentation. It could be a big gap, something like that. But it's just empty space. That's what it is. But remember, this empty space is very important. And as we get a little further into sculpture class, you will see how important that is. Okay, so we remember we talked about frontal before. Um, this is kind of the opposite of frontal. It's in the round. So that means that you can, you can view the sculpture from all sides. So this sculpture here is not meant to be viewed from one side. It is meant to be viewed from all sides. You could walk around it and view it and have different angles on it. So that means it's in the round. Okay. Generally, a lot of statues are in the round. And remember, you don't have to write down this whole definition this is kind of like the textbook definition, and you can just write down whatever you think you need to to remember it. Okay, uh, mass. Uh, remember on that closed sculpture, the, the big person with their head down looked like they're sad, but it was big and it was heavy looking and it was closed, okay? We often call that massive, where it is massive. It's big, it's bold, it's solid, it's massive, okay? Mass, when we talk about mass, we're talking about like the volume, how much material, how, um, and, and when we see those closed sculptures, you know, those remind us of mass because there's a lot of material there. So it's, it's like how much material, is there a lot of material and when I show you other sculptures, you'll really get the sense of this a little bit later. Often when we talk about art, we talk about the medium. And the medium is the materials used to make your sculpture or your any artwork. So if you're doing an oil painting, your, your medium might be oil paint on canvas. That would be the medium. Okay, if you're doing a drawing, it might be charcoal on paper. That would be the medium. So if you're doing ceramics, it might be earthenware clay, you know, maybe with glaze um, or paint or something like that. That would be the medium. So for some of our projects, our medium will be like, you know, cement, wire, wood, you know, that would be the medium. So that's what we made it out of. Mobile is kinetic. It's movable. Um, it's well balanced. It's kinetic. It, it moves and it can move and it's meant to possibly move. Okay. Open is the opposite of the closed. Um, you can see this one right here where this has lots of negative spaces, lots of holes and voids. You'll notice also it's not very massive. It might be big, but it's not massive. There's not a lot of mass. There's not a lot of material and it's very open looking. You know, you could see right through it. And that is the difference between something that is closed and something that is open. Um, 
the one that was closed had a lot of mass, no, no voids, you know, very big and huge, a lot of material. This one has less material. You can see through it, lots of holes and voids. Um, and it's completely different, completely different sculpture. So it has lots of negative spaces. Okay, we learned relief last semester when we talked about ceramics. And you know, basically, um, relief is a raised design on a flat base. That's what it is. So it's a raised design on a flat base. And we just talked about high relief, where the relief is still a flat base, but the sculpture is much taller. So I think it would be easier just to say a raised design on a flat base would be good. When we talk about scale, we talk about the size of something. You know, remember when we talked about mass, we talked about how much material it is. It's big, it's massive, it's got a lot of material. But scale is really like the size. It could be a large scale, something really big, or it could be something small scale. Um, often we, we refer to this if we make, let's say we made a sculpture of a figure and it's three inches tall, you'd say that's a small scale sculpture, small compared to the original. If you made a, a person that was 20 foot tall, that would be a large scale. So we're talking about size and size relative to the actual, you know, object. Mm -hmm.